So here we're going to look at some of the uh, advanced features uh, of the dilution um, wizard, including the standard setup. So if we go to dilution, it asked us initially to put the um, diluent volume in because in a default form, as we'll see here, it was showing the diluent volume and the sample volume. So the user can determine the sample size and the diluent volume they wish to make. So we'll look at that as an example. We're going to put in the diluent volume. And we'll put this um, has uh, 4,900 microliters. And now it asks us to put in the sample volume. And we'll put in 100 microliters. Quite clearly you can see this is a 1 to 50 dilution. So we'll look at that in use. Firstly, you can see illuminated with the blue light that it's going to aspirate the uh, volumes here, which is showing for the 4,900 microliters of diluent. It's the first step. Next step to take the diluent, a uh, sample, I beg your pardon, um, which is illuminated blue, and we can aspirate that. Press the button, and now we've dispensed both the diluent and the sample, giving us a 1 in 50 dilution. Okay, now we've seen the standard dilution format as in default mode, um, giving both the sample and diluent volume, we can introduce some other um, parameters to improve the performance using certain uh, types of samples and reagents. In advanced settings, we can actually introduce an air gap. The air gap option can be selected here. In the first option we have auto and trigger. I'm going to select auto for reasons you'll see shortly. And it actually has an, air to, uh, an option for us to put an air gap into the sample, which it will define in a moment. So if I can go back to the dilution program, we can see we are still in the standard format of diluent and sample, but we have an opportunity to introduce air gap. So I'm going to introduce an air gap of 20 microliters. What this is going to do is um, aspirate an air gap before taking sample up to separate the sample and diluent. And this ensures that mixing only occurs once the material is dispensed from the tubing itself. So we run this function and see if you can see the, the difference in separation. So again, uh, by actuating, we can actually see the, the diluent volume, which is actually highlighted in blue, aspirates first, and then automatically the 20 microliter air gap that I've actually input is drawn into the tubing line. You can now sample and you can see the air gap that we've aspirated. Sample, diluent and air gap can then be dispensed and mixed in the container. So that's the first application change. Okay, so we've seen now the use of a uh, pre-sample air gap being aspirated. We also have an option to take a post air gap sample. Um, I'll show you what this actually does and its relevance. Uh, we can go into advanced settings again and by scrolling down, you see there's an option for post air gap um, sample, which we've actually got in the system. Post air gap mode is off here, so we can put that on and actuate that by the trigger. 
The reason for that is that in the first mode we were using, the air gap was aspirated automatically, allowing the user to go straight to sampling without a tr a triggering the auto aspirate function. Here the, we want the user to be in control of the sampling procedure, so the air gap aspiration will occur with the use of the actuator. And we've got the 20 microliters actually defined there, so I can now go back to the program mode again. And can we can initiate the same procedure. So the first stage will be to aspirate the 4,900 microliters highlighted in blue. It will actually also take up the air gap, which we'll see. So we can see that happen. And then the air gap. Now it's ready for me to take a sample. Samples aspirated, and now it says there's an option to take in the additional air gap, and we can then press the button again, and we've taken up an additional 20 microliters of air gap. The operator can now wipe the tip of the probe. This can be done safely without reducing any uh, material from the tubing line but does obviously take away any residue that may have been on the tip. This is particularly relevant when we're taking very low samples, which might be additive to the dilution. So we can see on the display the unit's actually ready to dispense both the diluent and the sample with the air gaps as well. So we can see that in operation. dilution of 1 in 50 is prepared and it's ready to do the next dilution for us. So in the current form using the diluent and sample we can see the uh, factor here of dilution is shown to 1 in 50. Just to clarify how we can actually use this, if we can go into advanced program again we can look down to the factor type. Factor type is shown as set as dilution, that's just a 1 in 50 dilution. Some people actually may wish to work in a ratio format, so if I actually just change this to ratio, go back to program, you'll see that we have the same format here, but we're now 1 in 49. That means that we've got 100 microliters in 4,900 microliters. This is shown as a ratio. So your choice is to actually work out what's convenient to you. As a chemist, we normally work in this dilution would be shown as 1 into 50 mils total. So I'm going to revert back to that first stage now to the factor type to show dilution. The next point we'd like to look at is the programming mode itself. We were working with diluent and sample. I can actually go into this function and I can choose to work into a range of other options. This might include taking, for example, a sample and factor. Um, this is a preference for the user may select. Uh, it may be diluent and sample. The relevance of this can be seen. So if I select sample and factor, and come back, go back into diluent program, this actually now gives us an option to change these variables into what we're looking for. So if I'm looking at the sample, I can change this. I may wish to put a larger sample in, 200 microliters. And now we can actually change the dilution uh, volume actually here, or ratio, in to a different figure, maybe showing to one in 100, for example. And you can see automatically we've changed the diluent volume in relation to the sample and the dilution. This is done automatically. Also, you might know that the volume is greater than the volume of this 10 mil syringe. This is because the volume here um, can be selected by the syringe cycling the number of times appropriate to prepare this dilution. So we have all the same parameters here at the moment in that we have the air gaps pre and post. So we'll look at how that actually works with the system.
So first stage again was to um, aspirate the diluent. The first stage will be taking an initial volume. We'll pick up. The air gap is aspirated. Now the operator is actually asked to actually pick up our sample. We can now aspirate the air gap, wipe the tip and dispense the volume. The first part will dispense the initial 10 mils and then pick up the further 9,800 microliters or 9.8 mils. And so you can see here we've made a 1 in 100 dilution using a 200 microliter sample and cycling the appropriate number of times to prepare our dilution. Okay, so we've seen the adjustment of uh, preparing the standard using um, sample and dilution. We'll look at just one more of the variety of options that we have there. So here we're looking at sample and the factor we're working on. So here is another option. If the users wish to prepare, for example, st uh, standards using a, a similar total volume, let's say 10 mils, um, and we can put the dilution ratio of the uh, reference sample at different, uh, at different values, then um, this would be the one we'd choose, it's, it's factor and total. We can enter this and accept, and now we are able to identify the total volume, and if I wish to make standards up to a volume of 10 mils, for example, 10,000 microliters, enter that, and now we can begin to select a series of dilution ratios to prepare um, my standard reference for my stock standard solution here. And I'll look at preparing maybe three different standards from the stock. In the laboratory environment, clearly I would label these first um, to show the ratios, but we'll start by preparing um, a 1 in 10, a 1 in 50, and a 1 in 100 dilution, ending with a total volume of 10, micro, uh, 10 mils. So the first one we're going to do a 1 in 10. As we enter that, what you can actually see is it's automatically adjusted the sample volume to 1 mil. And then obviously it's maintained our diluent volume to 9,000, giving us a total volume here with the air gaps involved. So we'll initiate that part of the program. First stage, pick up first amount of diluent and air gap. Now able to pick up the amount of sample. Can now pick up the air gap, wet probe, first one shows a 1 in 10 dilution. Automatically aspirated the first volume here, we're going to change the uh, the dilution to a 1 in uh, 50 dilution the diluent is actually cleared and zeroized we can actually now put that to 1 in 50 and automatically we've adjusted the sample volume to 200 microliters and the diluent volume to 9800 
first step is to actually fill with the diluent and take up air gap. And we can pick up sample. Pick up air gap. Wipe tip. And now we have a 1 in 50 dilution, the standard. We had to change the ratio now to 1 in 100. And we can see automatically the uh, sample volume and the diluent volume have been adjusted, maintaining our 10 mil sample. First sequence is to aspirate the diluent and our air gap. ready for us to aspirate sample again pick up air gap wipe the tip and we're free to dispense into the container and here we have our three dilutions of one in ten one in 50 and one in 100, all to 10 mil volumes.